from Talk That Talk. We've got a very interesting episode and I would say there may be several trigger warnings. So please forgive us for certain things that might trigger stuff. But it's something that's really important that we really do need to talk about because a lot of people don't talk about these things, including myself. But today we've got our panel and to my right, it might be on your left, but to my right, we've got our beautiful Aish. How are you doing with that? Hi, good, thanks. We've got our infamous Cotney Black. Hi. We've got our baby Lara. Hey. And we've got our Gigi. So today, the topic's about bereavement. And the question is, have you ever had to deal with the loss of someone close? So how does everybody feel about bereavement? Have they experienced it? Have they just gone through the motions with someone or have they gone through it themselves? I have. You have? Yeah, I've um, had two, I've had a few experiences, but two that um, had an effect on me. One was my nan. Okay. And the other was, who I was a very, my nan, nan was very close to. Um, she brought me up. And, um, my dad, but I wasn't close to him. Okay. So when, when you're thinking out loud, I'd say when I lost my name, it really kind of, de- it, was, it was really bad. Emotionally, it was bad. I was 18 at the time, mm. and I hadn't lost anyone significant in my life at all, up to 18. Mm. I don't know if that's good or bad, but anyway. It's a good thing that you haven't lost someone before then. So yeah, so at, um, at 18, what I felt was, apart from extreme sadness, it was more what I had done when I was a teenager, what I'd put my hand for that made me feel bad. Mm. Like the way I was with her. Not that I wasn't good at times. I was a sport teenager, innit? Yeah. So you, you're very selfish when you're young, and I don't think you you don't realise how you're going to affect people until you get older. Yeah. Um, that was difficult, but you carry on, right? So fast forward to 35. My dad passed away. Okay. 35, 36, my dad passed away. That's quite late for you. Yeah. Well, for the age that you are now. Mm. So... Mm. That was recently. Yeah. Seven years. More or less, I'd say, because I wasn't close to him, I didn't expect to feel what I felt at all. How did you feel? Very, um, and I don't know, I haven't processed this before like this, as in comparing one death to the other. I'm not saying that one person was more important than the other or anything like that, but to me, my name would just had a greater role in my life than... The relationship you had with the two. Yeah. Than what, what my dad did, and, and I feel like I'm fine with it now. When he passed away, what I what what crossed my mind was Islam, to be honest with you, because okay. I should have not put my let's say because he wasn't around. I I not had hate. I wouldn't say it was hate. Resentment. Resentment. Yeah. Hang up. Yeah, because didn't teach me how to ride a bike. Mm. Didn't go to the football game. I didn't have that kind of, whether you call it cliche, what you're expecting mm. your dad to, to do for you or what you, and it, when you're young, you don't kind of expect it because you don't know you should be having it because you don't know any better, yeah? Mm. But as I've gotten older, I didn't look back, back on my life. I'm like, mate, this geezer wasn't here for this, that, blah, blah, blah. Don't get me wrong, whatever his decisions were, because when he was around and I, and I had access to him, because I was so upset at what, at his absence, when he was around, I didn't want to make the effort to find out what his reasons were for yeah. not being around. Not that I would have been satisfied anyway, like I'll, 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 I'll never know. But because there wasn't an opportunity for, because of my lack of interest, there was, never an, there was never a moment for him to explain to me his version 
of why, whatever that could have been. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's justified, like I can say, I don't know. Mm. I'm not him, didn't make his life choices. So when he died, it was kind of like, hmm, it made me, um, sad to a point of, if you've ever lost someone, yeah, and there's, there's kind of like an awful realisation that you can't talk to that person and get something back, conversation-wise, do you know what I mean? So even though he wasn't significant, not having access to him when he was gone is what bothered me, mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And even though there was so much missing, or I thought I'd missed so much throughout my younger years, well up into my 20s and 30s, because, mate, I feel like I'm talking too much now. No, you're not. No, it's yeah, you, you're not yeah. Yeah. gonna laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't wanna talk and talk and talk and talk without I'll cut you on everyone else getting up, yeah, <laughs> yeah, do that for sure. But, yeah, yeah, but you know, right now you're, you've mostly not spoken like this about your dad. Yeah, yeah, so. That's so okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what, what's, what affects me the most is not being able to hear what he would have said. Mm. But it's not because now, because he's, um, he's chosen to turn his back. It's because there's no, no chance. Choice. No choice, yeah. So I've realised late on in life, and I've, what I've learnt from that is whenever you have a bad issue with anybody, yeah, don't sleep on it. Mm -hmm. Let yourself cool down, because when you're angry, you shouldn't speak without it anyway. You can say the wrong thing. Mm. Unless you can live with it. I'm saying don't do that. <laughs> because if somebody dies, yeah, and there's a moment where you could have picked up the phone, even sent a text message, the only thing that's stopping you from doing that now is your stubbornness, like. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that stubbornness literally destroys friendships, any relationships you have, yeah. because of pride. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, I should have said this, I shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. Or that person, you feel like you're not gonna get accepted for your effort. Do it anyway. Send a message anyway, make the phone call anyway. Because once they're gone, that, that feeling is incomparable to you being ignored mm -hmm. because they didn't answer the phone or they didn't get back to you or and whatever. Mm. So it's well. very, it's suppressing your pride and your ego, especially when it comes to relationships, is very, very important. You've yeah. got to understand that as human beings, see when you're young, yeah, you naturally assume that your parents know it all mm. because mm. they're your guardians, isn't it? <coughs> they're who you, oh, mum, how do I do this? How do I tie my shoelaces? How do I, how do I, blah, blah, blah. So you're constantly going in, you're constantly going to them for answers, mm. yeah? But what you've got to realise, as early as you can, they still have faults like this. Still, they're still human beings that are yeah. fallible. And with that natural kind of, you, they make mistakes, you've got to accept, you know what, my mum could have made a mistake then. Yeah. My dad could have made a mistake then. And the same way you would forgive your friends for a little, when your friends put a foot on or a step wrong, you need to have more love and more effort in forgiving your, your parents, no matter what they've done. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, some people are toxic and abusive and they're your loved ones. That's just what it yeah. is. So if you can try and maintain some kind of relationship, but from a distance, make love, an effort. Love from afar. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you have to, don't, but don't, don't, ever, don't ever give up on somebody. You know enough. what I'm saying? So, that's, um, so what I learned, in, just to close, is that my other friendships that I had with people that we weren't talking, I patch them up. That's I make good. my effort from my side. That's mm. good. If they don't want to reciprocate the energy, that's down to them. Mm -hmm. So I know now, if that person passes, I'll be gutted. But, but you, from my yeah. side, I tried. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. If they didn't want it, okay. That, that, that will hurt me because we still weren't able to reestablish what we had. But at least I tried. And it's me not trying, very, that, very that difficult. Is the way you. Yeah. Very, very difficult. Um, so, so, yeah, go on, I was going to say, has anybody else yeah, dealt so with anything? For me, yeah, this is very, very embarrassing for me to admit. Don't be embarrassed. But before, bereavement, to me, was just a, a motive. What do you mean? So, like, 
when you have bereavement, you have nine nights. Oh, okay, so you're talking about, the, especially black people, <laughs> we have big, we celebrate life basically. In yeah. death, we do celebrate life, which you kind of should. Yeah, <clears throat> so that was kind of like my guilty pleasure. Okay, you like to go to funerals. You know, you get you get funeral hoppers. <laughs> funeral crashes. Funeral am, crashes. Like many crashes. I have been one of those. <laughs> oh, and you do? Like, what do you do? Funeral you know crash. People can't tell she's you pretending that you she's the, the niece. <laughs> she's pretending she's the niece or something. Who's <laughs> gonna say yep? What the mad cows are doing? They're gonna, <laughs> gonna snitch. So. Oh my gosh, Courtney pulls out her heart, his heart and then it's a party. I feel like it's going somewhere though. Yeah, go on. But like, um, <clears throat> like, I have like dealt with death, but like before it didn't really affect me because it's like, it would be like a friend or someone on the road yeah. or someone who was really old, like. Not that personal. It wasn't that personal to me, but like two years ago, my granddad died. Oh. And for me, oh. yeah, like it was it was nuts because it's like <clears throat> he was ill because he lived in Jamaica and like, the healthcare system is a bit, you know, mm, techie. He kind of he tried to suppress it, and then once we did find out that he was ill and whatever, it was cancer, and then it's like my family they tried to hide it for, from us, like he was dying. But it's like, I don't know if they was in denial or mm. thinking he was going to get better, but it's like, they tried to like really keep it under wraps. And then, um, yeah, the cancer ravaged him. Um, and this all happened like during COVID. So it's like, even at the time, I think it was only 10 people allowed in church. Mm -hmm. So even then it would have been his wife and their nine kids. So, and it's like, even him being in Jamaica, it's that nobody could get to him in time, or like my, my aunt even from America was there, my nan and my uncle was there, my mum, she tried to go, but because of all of the, the COVID restrictions, mm -hmm. she got to Canada and then the layover was too long, so they sent her back to England, oh and then no. she went again, and then he died when she was on the way there. Even with that happening, it's like, personally, I don't, I don't think that I've gotten over it, I feel like I kind of just suppressed it and I kind of like, I just had to get on with it. Yeah. Like, and um, I feel like, like, because I'm very spiritual as well, like me and my granddad, we was like, he basically like, my, I was basically brought up by my grandparents and I'm very, very close to my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And it's like, during that time, there was this one night, I went out for my cousin's birthday. I didn't really enjoy it. I'd had quite a bit of, to drink, I come home, I was like really like in my feelings, inconsolable, and it's like he came and visited me. So, um, I don't know, he told me like that I'm silly, <laughs> I shouldn't cry, oh, that he's happier now, he's not in pain anymore, and he told me that he was all, that he'll always be with me, and it's like I always feel his presence with me. So yeah, that's like my experience. That was very recent though. Yeah. You know, have you spoken to anybody about it? How, how's the family network? How's your mum doing? Uh, so she went to Jamaica. She got there the day he died. She literally, she stayed there for about seven weeks. Uh, they buried him. They had a nice little send off for him and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's like, with my family, they're not, they don't really talk about their feelings and their emotions and mm. stuff like that. They kind of suppress it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I know that my, my granddad, he was a loving man. He was a family man. And what my mum would say is that like, he just wants everybody to live good as family. Mm. And that's it. How about you guys? Um, I'm, I'm blessed to say that I haven't had a significant death in my adult life that I've had to process emotionally as an adult. Um, I did lose my granddad when I was younger and my grandmother, but no one that I'd formed a close bond with. Um, I have been part of the support system for friends that have lost parents. Um, one in particular friend, um, I used to go and visit her mum in her final days because the hospital was just near my workplace. So I used to go every day. Um, 
I can't explain it. Like, I can't even... I, I don't fear it. Obviously, it's scary to think, what am I going to feel and how am I going to process it when I have to feel that? But being part of a support system for someone that's going through that, it really, like, like you said, it just makes you realise don't take anyone or anything for granted. Yeah, grief does very strange things to people as well. You know, it, it, you see people literally physically not be able to just carry on, you know, like in funerals, the kind of emotions that come out and, and you know, people just forget where they are because the pain is just too much. And for me, my main thing is with talk, talk about it. And that's what my friend really made clear to me that she's so thankful for the people around her that even if it's just sitting in silence, not doing anything and just remembering her mom, just talking about the little things that were, that you know, that are important to her and um, just uh, keeping the positive memory alive. But I think the main thing is I don't see grief as something you get over. I think it's something that you, you become stronger. Yeah, you become stronger and so thus you deal with it. That's what I see with all the people around me. They are so strong, like bereavement is, I don't know. I, I, I can't speak on it from a personal point of view like that because I've been blessed so far. Um, but obviously death is a part of life. That is the only thing we're sure mm -hmm. of on this earth. And um, I think what I've been trying to do in terms of, you know, like I said, I find myself very blessed, is try and come to peace with death, if that makes sense. Try and accept that it is a part of life and not to fear it, to see that life does go on. I've, been, I've seen it, I've witnessed it, you know, it's not gonna be easy, but it's something that we have to go through. Um, and I don't believe that I'm, like Aisha, I'm very spiritual and I don't believe that people fully die. I believe their energy always is around you. I believe that they will always connect with you in some sort of way. Um, yeah. It was like two weeks ago, my granddad passed away. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, fine, thank you. Um, two weeks ago, he passed away. And obviously- And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks ago, he passed away. Um, I was supposed to go to Nigeria in December and um, obviously before the whole, they, they put Nigeria on the red list yeah. mm -hmm. and then they said you can't go and then there was just a whole lot of politicals mm -hmm. and then my mum, she just didn't have it, we were just going to go anyways and then they took us off but then my mum just didn't have a good feeling about the whole trip in general so she was just like, she just doesn't, just because she doesn't have a good feeling. She was just like, I just don't think we should go. Not because we can't go, just because she just doesn't feel like we should go. She just said she had a bad feeling. And then I think they, they some of my aunties called me in Nigeria and they were like, oh, he's in the hospital. He's really doing really bad and stuff like that. And I, I felt bad because I was thinking I should have been there just like, before you know it. He was out of hospital like a day or two later. They called and said he passed away. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, it's crazy because if I, if I went to Nigeria, I would have been able to at least see him for like the last time. But I'm happy like that I did something nice and he, he knew about it just before he that's, passed away. That's, that's but that's, 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 that's uh. very recent that I haven't really dealt with. I don't know how to deal with it. Like my mum is way worse than me, so I have to be strong yeah. for her. Yeah. Yeah. And um, even though it's not my parent, the, the, I, the idea of even losing a parent mm. is, is crazy. And she did tell me the other day that he, he visited her, mm. and no, I didn't really want to know about it. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. I don't really, spooky. I don't really, yeah, it does. I don't really like to know those type of stuff, because those type of stuff really freak me out. But no, I, ha I haven't dealt with it. And I think when I do go in a couple of months for the burial, then it will really mm -hmm. dawn on me that mm -hmm. he's actually yeah. not coming back. But like, I'm more happy to know that he's in peace now mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. he's, he's not suffering anymore. Because that's something that you have to think of. There's some people that are <coughs> really suffering. Yeah. And as much as it hurts that they're not here anymore, they're not in pain anymore. They're not in pain anymore. So, yeah, yeah. that's just something. And that's like, that's like my situation as well. Like when like my mum went, it's like the vast majority of my family, they were in Jamaica. <coughs> and it's like me and my mum, like we have like a business. So it's like when she went away, I was literally left holding the fort. So it's like, I couldn't process my feelings. Mm, I you had to just carry nothing. on business as usual. I just had to usual. carry on open business. And then it's like, 
at the time, my cousin was working for us. So it's like, one of us would be in there and we'd be miserable and we'd have people coming in, oh, put a smile on your face, oh, cheer up, oh, this, mm. all that, well, excuse me. What are going for? My granddad's dying of cancer. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm not grinning from ear to ear like a Cheshire cat, but I just don't have it in me. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it is mad. And also, so when he visited me as well, for me, it was so comforting. It was, it was really, really comforting. Just for him, like, he, like, he was laughing, like, mm. yeah, like, all of that, it was, it was just so comforting. See, the thing is, um, I'm actually going to get very personal um, because the main reason I'm going to get personal is because I think it would benefit a lot of people. And people say about people coming to them and all that. Now, my mum died a few years ago and I have never felt her, never felt her energy, never felt her spirit. I'm not saying it's there or not, but people wonder a lot about me and my character and they don't seem to realise, like, my mum dying absolutely destroyed me. Like, half the people here actually don't know that my mum passed away. But like G said, she's had friends. I'm one of the friends where she has had me crying down the phone. Faith has had me crying the phone. And all I'm saying is, I just want to die. I don't want to live anymore because I don't know how to live without my mum. My mum was my best friend. And it's really weird because there's certain times that makes me... The thing is, my mum died of an asthma attack. And I know there's no good way to die, but you just think, a fucking asthma attack? Seriously? Of all the things that you could die of in the world, my mum was taken away from me from an asthma attack. Like, to deal with that on a daily basis. Now, I used to be very religious. I had a lot of faith in God. And I sometimes cry really hard because of how much faith I lost. Lost When I was very religious, I used to pray a lot, but I never ever prayed for myself. I always prayed for others. I never really asked God for anything. I don't know why, because I should have. People do, <laughs> you know, but I was never that person. I always prayed for other people. And my mum was in a coma for almost a year. And when she was in that coma, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, prayed more than I could ever. And I was like, God, this is the only time I need you to have me. My mum needs to wake up out of this coma. She never did. Now, the worst part is, like, I've got six siblings <laughs> and having to deal with those array of emotions of older brothers, younger brothers, younger sister, I'm the middle child, so I'm fucked. I'm in the worst place to be, because it's like from all angles. And none of my siblings ever talk about my mum, ever. And I'm very emotional, I'm very vocal about her as well. Like, I cry and I cry and I cry, you know? And nobody understands, unless they have had such a significant trauma of what it's like. Like, right now, I'll speak to you guys. We could talk about McDonald's, say. I'm thinking about my mum constantly. It affected my relationships. I couldn't have sex. I didn't want to have sex. But especially when she was actually in her coma. The thought of that was just like, my mum's lying there. Huh? Overwhelming. Mm. It was very overwhelming. Do you feel like there's everything. a sense of guilt when someone passes away? It's almost like, when yeah, you have experienced I enjoy it. It's like even just a smile, you're like, yeah, but this person's gone. How can I be smiling and stuff? You almost mm -hmm. feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And. The thing with my mum, that was the first major thing. And then it seemed like a rippling effect of things. And like, I lost a lot of friends as well because my emotions were all over the place. I sometimes, when initially it happened, I was very numb. Cause I, one, you don't get the time to even grieve because I have to plan a funeral. Mm -hmm. They literally give you days to sort this out. And the thought of, I have to bury my mum, it's like, I cannot even take time to cry because I've got to make sure that my mum has the best send off she could ever have, you know? And then to make it worse, I can't speak to my siblings because they're in the same predicament. You know, everybody, all of us have a different version and all, all of us feel like we're hurt the most. You know, especially mm -hmm. me because I was actually with my mum when she died. Like my sister was in Barbados, my brother was in Manchester. It was like five o'clock in the morning. I was the only one that had to deal with this. And 
to actually see a person take their actual last breath is traumatic as fuck. And nobody will ever understand that trauma unless they've experienced. Because I remember I've had my friend who lost her mum. And I'm, my mum was there at the time as well. And she was like, you know what, honey, I know I'll never be your mum, but you've always got a mother in me. And I cried because I thought I knew the feeling of what it would be like to lose my mum. Mm. And it was nothing to what I thought it was actually going to be until I, I, like nothing, nothing. When I did my mum's funeral, I couldn't even tell you if I was there. It was a complete blank. I don't know. I couldn't tell you he was there. I couldn't tell you what happened. I couldn't tell you what was said. And even after she passed away, I had complete memory loss. I couldn't even remember immediate family members. I would have to go to my sister and I'm like, who the fuck is that again? <laughs> like, I literally couldn't, like complete blank. Yeah. And it's like, she's looking at me like what? I had complete memory loss. Now, um, you guys, some of you, you guys might know, um, Rush Millions spoke about his sister passing away. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother was her, God, my, my mother was her godmother. And one thing I have to say is rather than people being so judgmental or quick to jump at people because they're behaving a certain way, you never know what's going on behind okay. closed doors. Because yeah. a lot of people don't even know when my, my mum's passed away. You know, and that's because I don't disclose it. So when they, what happened is I've lost my mom, but not only have I had to see people online speak to him in such a derogatory way. And remember, he's not just because he's a celebrity and he's who he is, he's got family, all right? I was with his sister when she passed away and the trauma, because it reminded me, it brought me straight back to my mom when I was slowly trying to heal over some things mm. with her and it brought me straight back seeing that happen to her but then we've got to go online and see the things that they were saying to rush millions about his sister was absolutely disgusting you understand so it's mm. not affecting him people need to be mindful of how they deal with people on social media right because it wasn't damaging to him the trauma that even that caused me or the things that they were saying to him mm. all right was it was traumatic and so it, you're, you're dealing with that. Then I'm dealing with another death of her, like, s so soon after my mum. Mm. And my mum loved her to bits. Mm. You know, but it was, it was her godmother, you know? And then to deal with the whole family. Mm. So they've dealt with me losing my mum. I'm now having to deal with him losing his sister, mm. you know, and the family. Like, nobody understands the rippling effect that it had on everybody. And we're quite a close-knit family, mm. all right? So when people are acting out or being a certain way, you've got to take time and be mindful of what could be going on. And I'm not saying it, it counteracts for all behavior, but nobody understands the trauma that it causes, all right? So again, I'm just starting to heal over my mum, then that happens. And then in the space of last year, I lost both my nans, you know, literally. And people always see me smiling, joking, this and other, but there's another side to all this bereavement where people are broken. And when I mean broken to the point that I was, I was literally wishing that a bus could hit me. You know, I just don't know how to live without my mom. And I'm mm. just slowly coming to terms with, I'm gonna have to live without her because the main issue is I'll never hear her voice again. As I'm at a certain age, I want to speak to her about things. I feel like I can never ever love again because my heart is so broken that I can't. It's affecting relationships, whether it's friendships, family, or even intimate relationships is completely affected from the trauma of my mom. I'm heartbroken and I don't think I'll ever not be heartbroken. And this is why even when it comes to relationships, I don't let guys come in my space a certain way mm -hmm. because, you know, if you've got a problem, you can run to your mom. You know, my mom just makes it all better. And because she's no longer here, I have to completely protect myself, still upset about my mom, you know. So I know I'm going on, going on about Are my mum, right? but I just need you're people right. to understand, all right? The world doesn't revolve around them. Things mm -hmm. are going on in people's life that they will never ever know of, all right? People don't understand the loneliness it is when you lose someone so, so significant. I just want to speak to my mum sometimes. Mm -hmm. And her birthday doesn't even bother me, all right? When she went to the economy, it's because she came out for my birthday. So my birthday is traumatic for me, you know? I've had a major birthday recently and she wasn't there, all right? And then there's, but the, the, funny, the funniest thing is, the time that I'm most affected by isn't Christmas or anything like that, it's Valentine's Day. 
my mum was always my Valentine's mm -hmm. and her being my Valentine's, it's just like Valentine's means nothing to me without her, you know? And I, I just feel like ever since she died, I've been constantly dealing with death. You know, my best friend lost her dad. And this actually, I think, maybe hurts me more than even losing my mum, like talking about losing my mum, not losing my mum, is when my mum passed away, she was my rock. Like, she was there completely. Her dad passed away during COVID. And our, our relationship is completely null and void. Like, this is someone that I spoke to every day, and she's a daddy's girl, and I feel so bad because she's, she's not pushed me away, but I think she finds it difficult to be around me because I'm the only person that would so slightly understand what she's going through. Mm. So where she can be with all her other friends and just be herself with me, it's a reminder because she went through the trauma. She had me on the phone saying, trigger warning, I want to kill myself. I'm just going to die. I just want to die. I just want to die. I just don't want to live anymore. I don't know what to do. And when her dad died, I feel like I've not given her that support. Mm. But the problem is she's pushed me away so far. I don't know what to do. Mm. And it's like, there's so many things. And at the same time, as you're dealing with that, you're dealing with so many different emotions of all the people that you're losing. And it's like, my head's screwed. Your head's screwed. Where do we go from here? You know, everybody wants to have a party. Everybody wants to do it. But people don't realise funeral costs, how expensive it is. Mm. You understand? And this is why boys stop killing each other as well, because you're leaving your parents with massive debts. You know, you, you're thinking about debt when you, you're trying to bereave. You know, it's all these factors that come into play. I'm going on, sorry, but it's all these factors. It's all these factors that come into play where, you know, we're taking a life or we're doing it and we think like death is just blase, but until it hits some, you yeah, in the face. We've become quite desensitized to yeah. death as well, especially because all the news is in our hand. You don't even have to switch on the TV. Yeah. Just go to check a message and you've seen so and so, someone's been stabbed or yeah. a celebrity's passed away or, you know, so you kind of disassociate it. from it. I find uh, talking to Allah helps a lot. Mm -hmm. mm. This is where I struggle, though, because I've lost so much faith, Courtney. I've lost so much faith. This really makes me tear up of how much faith I have lost in God because he let me down. I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody says. If you are spending your whole entire life worshipping and at the time of need that you need this almighty and he doesn't help you out, how can you still have faith? You know, I want, I need, that's the only time in my life that I need him. I wouldn't even need him for myself. I just needed him <laughs> for my mum. And it kills me to know that I wouldn't even be with a guy if he hadn't had faith. That's how much I was into my faith. Like, if you don't have a form of religion, I will not be with you. Now I don't care because God let me down majorly. And there's no answer to that. Nobody can answer that. Nobody can say, maybe you don't know the reason why, but there was a reason. But if there was a reason and you're the almighty, why have you done this to me and how many other children that is in my family living without my mum? I've lost my best friend. I've lost my soul. I feel soulless without her. And there's no explanation for God has made, uh, trying to make that better or having a reason for taking my mum. I don't care what the reason is. If you know it's going to cause so much hurt, why would you do this, God? And this is where I struggle with religion and when it comes to things like this. Mm, so. We have um, a phrase, it's a, it's a certain word that's in the Quran. It's a inna lillahi wa inna ilahi la jawn. And it means from Allah we came and unto Allah we will return. Everyone's got to die. Yeah, I know this. So we also accept that. The people you love the most, they have to go at some point, and it's not going to be under our conditions. Yeah, and Isn't that's it? what I struggle with. Yeah. That's what I struggle with, because if God's there to love me and protect me, why hasn't he done it as far as I'm concerned? But you can't, then that makes you the chooser of when life and death will be. And yeah, it's not, it's well, not your choice, it's not my choice, it's not anybody else's choice. It's, it's, just, it's just very unjust and it becomes hard for someone like me to ever feel good about this. There's nothing that's ever going to make it better. You know, 
you know, even like losing my nan, like every little bit of my mum that has been taken away, when I lose someone, it's just another bit of her chipped away. And it's like further and further to the point that I'm just thinking, am I gonna remember what my mum's voice sounds like? Will I forget her? You know, all these things run through your head and it's like, when am I ever gonna not feel like this? And the reality is, I'm never not going to feel like this. And that's what fucks me up, that I'm never gonna not feel like this. The only thing I'm, I'm forced into having to deal with it, but I'm never not gonna feel like this. If I'm eating a chocolate bar, if I'm doing my shoelaces, if I'm going to the store, everything surrounds by me constantly thinking about my mum and that's a head fuck. I've had counseling for it and I do, the, 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 my siblings are fucked. They don't <laughs> talk about my mum, like at all, all, right? It's only myself and my brother that went to counseling. I've spoken a lot, <laughs> all right, guys? I say something about you. Of course you can. So we have another verse mm. that says, verily are only in the remembrance of Allah. Mm -hmm. The hearts find peace. So maybe it's what you're turning away from is going to be the only way you have a solution. Possibly. I need to be open to that. Yeah. So what I'd say is if any one of us has lost some money, anyone, and you feel like you can't get over it, or a lot of us wake up in the middle of the night, right? Mm -hmm. Silly o'clock. All the time. Yeah. In those moments, talk to Allah. Middle of the night, you wake up, why am I awake? Have a chat with Allah, because in the last third of the night, he comes down to our lowest sky, and he asks three questions, yeah? Who has something they want I can give? Who needs forgiving I can forgive them? And I can't think of the third, forgive me, but if you search it, you research it, you'll find it. So in the middle of the night, when every one of us wakes up, you talk to Allah, you try to connect with him. Any problem you have, anything you think about, mm -hmm. you can have a chat with him about it. Because he's the only one that understands our hearts, do you understand? Yeah, so I think I've done enough talking and we're gonna wrap up this episode. But any last words from anyone? I just think that when it comes to bereavement, I think bereavement is often a time when people come together. But I feel like it shouldn't be because of bereavement. You should like come together when people are still alive, give people their flowers, be kind, say kind things, visit people, uplift people. Don't wait until it's too late. Mm. Yeah, I would just say I, I can't tell anyone how to deal with their bereavement because it affects everyone in different ways. I would just say to everyone, give support, give support to your loved ones and tell your loved ones you actually love them mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. it's too late. And yeah, that's it. Judy, you got anything to say? Um, I think for me, just talk, talk to someone. Um, and also, you know, um, just if you do need counselling, then go to counselling. It's all about talking. If you feel like you can't talk to family members because they know you too personally, sometimes talking to a stranger helps. So they don't know you personally. They can't judge you on the personal things. Um, or you don't want your close family to see you in that state, go and speak to someone. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. It was a bit of an emotional one and a personal one. Uh, sorry I talked so much, but this is an episode of Talk That Talk. If you do need any information, we will be putting stuff on our socials. You can always DM us and, well, everybody knows me as Cherry Tart. So you can always DM me if you would like to talk. And yeah, thanks for watching. Peace out. Baby, I know you're